This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on Significance of Science 20, Startup 20 and Financial Architecture Working Group under India's G20 Presidency. The participants are former Ambassador Veena Sikri and Umvesh Upadhyay, AIR correspondent. India under its presidency of G20 is eyeing to make the grouping truly inclusive, ambitious and action-oriented. January 2023 is about to end, but the last few days of this month is witnessing back-to-back important meetings of G20 in India, be it the Startup 20, Financial Architecture Working Group meeting or the Science 20. And today to discuss on these important G20 meetings and their significance, we have with us former Ambassador Veena Sikriji. Welcome to the program, Ambassador. Thank you. The two-day Science 20 inception meeting is being held in Puducherry as a part of India's year-long G20 presidency. Indian National Science Academy's president, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma, is country's chair of the deliberations that will focus on scientific and technology aspects and will help the growth of nations also aligning with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. To begin the discussion, Ambassador Sikri, I want to know from you What is the theme of this year's Science 20 meeting and how significant it is? India has planned as its G20 presidency to bring together the developing and the developed countries and to see what decisions we can come to for the benefit of the world as a whole. You know, we're talking about uh, one earth, one humanity, one future. And I think the science... 20 that you have said is taking place in Puducherry is one example where India has a lot to offer. India has a lot to say about what we have achieved and how we can use the scientific achievements that India has made for the benefit of humanity, including particularly the developing countries. So I think that this is the very important aspect that we have such senior scientists from India leading this meeting and they are in a very good position to uh, say whether it's a space program, whether it's a vaccination program, uh, whether it is our future that we have for our scientific achievements. We are able to lay all these out before the G20 science leaders from different countries. As you know that the G20 is a group which has developing and developed countries, the leading economies of the world. But in addition to the G20, we, India has invited nine additional countries, uh, which are countries like Bangladesh, like Nigeria, Oman, Uh, Spain, UAE, uh, you know, and it's a very, very good mix, the Netherlands and Mauritius. So these are all countries uh, where there will be a great benefit for them to be there to see what are the progress that G20 can make. Now, I think that uh, the uh, way in which India has planned the discussion is uh, the way India has planned its leadership of the G20 uh, for this year is, uh, is significant in that it enables India to take the leadership of the South and put before the rest of the world, to put before the developed countries, what are the deep interests and requirements of the South countries, of the developing countries, and how the bridge between the North and the South countries can be met in a way that will benefit everybody. The most important factor that India is emphasizing again and again, is not a zero-sum game. We are looking at solutions which will benefit all, benefit humanity as a whole. And in every sector of the G20 meetings, this is how we are presenting ourselves. You very nicely pointed out the few highlights that India is projecting under its G20 presidency and that's why we can say that the theme of the meeting is disruptive science for innovative and sustainable development. I also want to know that when the world is looking at India as an action-taking and thoughtful leader in regard to global concerns such as climate change, be it the healthcare and making science an integral part of society and culture, how India is aspiring to achieve and set new benchmark under this G20 presidency? India is aspiring to achieve this benchmark precisely because India today is in a leadership role in almost all the areas being discussed. Whether it is, uh, whether you're looking at GDP growth, whether you're looking at the manufacturing sector, whether you're looking at uh, the digital sector, digital technology, whether you're looking at um, healthcare or uh, youth sector. In each of these, India has significant achievements to present. So this is the first thing that India is recognized today as being in a position of leadership on all these issues. But having said that, India is very concerned that through its leadership, it wants to bring in the benefit of all countries, of uh, its Vasudev 
put them come the world is one family so our benefits our progress must be used together with the progress of other countries for the benefit of all humanity for the benefit of those countries who are facing difficulties and in this context i would say that a meeting in chandigarh on uh, financial architecture is very significant yeah, because that, this the that brings me to my issue. next question that the first two day g20 international financial architecture working group meeting under india's g20 presidency is held in chandigarh and will conclude tomorrow how is the first g20 international financial architecture working group meeting addresses the global challenges of this century for say the stability and cohesion of the international financial architecture yeah you know that the fin- the international financial architecture is one of the key concerns of today it is a concern because today there is a big question mark about whether the world is facing a recession or not this is the first concern and in a recession you know that it is a global financial architecture that can save the world and if everybody works together you can and hope to find a solution out of any recessionary trends that are now manifesting themselves and secondly there has been a big demand from uh, the developing countries about the need for a change in the global financial architecture mm. so that it is more equitable that it meets the needs of the developing countries as well as the developed countries and uh, this particular meeting in chandigarh the international financial architecture meeting is a preparatory meeting for the meeting of the finance ministers of the g20 and you know that at the finance ministers meeting and now at the chandigarh meeting itself we also have the representatives of all the international organizations dealing with the international financial architecture whether it be the imf or the world bank or the un and a whole host of other organizations these meetings are very significant preparatory meetings which will really determine what is going to be the outcome of the finance in this meeting and so the outcome of india's g20 chairmanship and i remember in the inaugural procession of the chandigarh meeting cabinet minister shri tomar was also present and he said that india is bridging the gap between the rich and developed countries and the poor countries and there should be an equal share of finance and architectural benefits what's your take on this definitely this is our basic position this is a very important position uh, that india has taken all along and this meets in very well with india's leadership of the g20 we are always saying that we must bridge this uh, the divide of inequality between the rich and the poor country and you can only do it through changing the global financial architecture in a way that benefits all so i think that um, india has laid down its position very well and very correctly and we hope that the discussions yesterday and today will really come up with specific solutions that will be looked at by the finance ministers when they meet uh, in a few months time how the sherpas meeting which took place in uh, december in udaipur that also was a very significant meeting because it laid down what are india's priorities you know mm-hmm. and what are india's priorities what we are going to do we took for example we spoke at that time about the digital revolution and how we want the digital revolution where india is a world leader to benefit all countries and we are willing to help and we are willing to give that and we talked about climate change and how we want the climate change also to be beneficial to all countries and we want to have a leadership role in that we also talked at that meeting itself about south solidarity and how we want all the countries of the south to come together and and move ahead together but you know the blending of culture and soft power the, that is very important that we must bring that out and uh, so that the world can understand each other that we can understand uh, where we are coming from we even spoke about difficult issues like the ukraine war what is happening today and how the world can come together to find a solution through dialogue and diplomacy so you know the leadership role that india has um, talked out for itself is very significant i also remember that um, Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi wrote an excellent article on this which came in the newspapers again uh, last month when uh, India had just taken over the chair of the G20 and uh, there also where he had spoken so eloquently where he had written so eloquently about how he believes that all of us by coming together can progress in a way that will benefit all the participating countries and that they want that is why india has uh, taken care to invite so many additional countries to be there and to focus on the one future this is one planet we have one future until we work together and agree on a future we will all sink together but we must not do that we must swim together and this is what india's uh, g20 chairmanship is focused on ambassador sikri watching the g20 schedule of india last weekend was quite eventful when we talked that startup 20 was held in hyderabad on january 28th and 29 that aspires to create a global narrative for supporting startups and enabling synergies between startups corporate investors innovation agencies and other key ecosystem stakeholders to know more on this and 
could you please explain what was the key outcome of the startup 20 event you know startup 20 the startup area is another area where india definitely has emerged as a world leader but where india is very much wanting to translate its world leadership into uh, progress in other countries as well because as we know startups is a unique area where you have young people coming together with brilliant ideas and then working on those ideas and many of them have created unicorns that have gone into you know the billion dollar mark so this is uh, where india has because of our uh, dynamic uh, and highly educated and very progressive youth and also because of the system that allows the startups to do well the financial economic system that is there and the um, basic architecture is there for startups to do well so we were able to really showcase india's achievement in startups and to say that we are prepared to help uh, other countries in coming up so i really am looking forward that on the startup front there will be a definite uh, plan uh, which will bring together other countries who will then work with india and india will work with them in training in uh, monitoring in mentoring uh, and in progressive achievements in this area ambassador secret startup 20 has three different tracks namely foundation and alliance finance and inclusivity and sustainability uh, could you please simplify what these tracks focus on well sustainability is the key issue because as we know that startups uh, very often uh, don't have such a high percentage of success and they start up it might be a brilliant idea but for some reason or the other it does not become sustainable now why does it not become sustainable either the idea is not a good one which is another thing or the financial system has not been able to help so that is the financial track so then we need to have a financial track that is uh, that is you know in in sync with the interests and the needs of the startup uh, regime the startup methodology of working and uh, that's how the banks need to be more uh, interested banks are of course as we all know very conservative so sometimes they do support sometimes they do not support so that is these are the issues that we have highlighted and this is a very learning area you know and then i mean that's the first one that you mentioned is how do we know that this area will welcome a startup so this is you know, such a new area of work that um, india has a lot because we have so much experience in this area we have so many startups and so many of them have become unicorns that we are able to uh, share this experience and uh, there could not be a better way for india to showcase its leadership role in the g20 than what it has done Uh, through the startups and of course uh, the um, decisions will come up but we have the decisions but we have to always see how these are accepted by other countries and how they are blended into their own respective systems so that it becomes a success in other countries as well this is a long way ahead you know this is only the beginning this first startup meeting has you know laid down uh, certain very good guidelines and said that we are willing to help but how do we translate this in the future into action action in assisting other countries is what we have to see and to mention it also that apart from the meeting that is happening in puducherry right now uh, there's also a scheduled visit of all the s20 delegates to oroville after the meet in pondicherry i want yeah. to understand from you ambassador sikri how india is parallelly showcasing its culture and diversity alongside the important g20 meets Yeah I think it's a very significant factor and India has uh, always a great focus on the joint going ahead cultural spiritual message our civilization heritage as well as the most modern and up to date developments in science and technology so what better way for doing it than to take the science 20 group who is in uh, in pondicherry to uh, oroville where you have this great matra mandir you have the great coming together of uh, modernity of a great freedom fighter like orobindo and his message his spiritual message to the world that you cannot achieve progress without being at peace with yourself so this message that india wants to convey to the world is very vital and i'm really pleased it's really um, heartening to see how it is being blended together and how uh, even a group of leading scientists from all over the world is being taken to uh, to oroville to show them the best of what india can offer in the spiritual aspects and this message is significant i think the message is appreciated by one and all it also showcases india's uh, spiritual and cultural and civilizational heritage and uh, with these comments to conclude this session thank you so much ambassador sikri for giving us your time and making this conversation thank insightful you. thank you you were listening to a discussion on significance of science 20 startup 20 and financial architecture working group under india's g20 presidency 
The participants were former Ambassador Veena Sikri and Omvesh Upadhyay, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnstalks at gmail.com.